go on to our last oscillator, which is uh, a simple topic, probably the most important topic in the course in terms of applications. Uh, so you will have a job in that period. I just got an email about 10 minutes ago that the book is at Crafty's. Crafty's is on College Avenue, just past the traffic light, it's $44. If you go to their website, there's a link to that on the course uh, webpage now. Uh, you can pay for it ahead of time so to make sure you get your copy before somebody else does. If uh, they sell out, they'll print more, but it'll take, uh, I don't know, last semester somehow people complained that they were slow on the reprints, so I'll try to get them to be faster, but eventually you get a book, but if you don't want to get one quick. Basically on effort. So the grade you're going to get, uh, I think we have to put five, six hours. Uh, if, you, if you spend that much, you get automatic full credit. Um, but we're also grading, uh, we're going to try and grade the homework more carefully than we did last semester in 2020. And that's the second grade, which is the real grade. Uh, as if we were grading the homework. I think we're not even going to record the real grade. That's for you. You're doing the homework for your education. We're grading it uh, in that way for your education. So, uh, separate from you're just trying to get credit because you want uh, the homework is equivalent to a final exam or grade. You're doing it because you want to learn and you think you're going to learn and you think you'll be better on these. <coughs> so we're trying to encourage you to do it. And we'd like you to do it well. If you just look at this from a distance, this is sort of what good homework should look like, which is that there should be some indication of what the problem is. Somebody should be able to read your homework assignment without going back in reading the book. doesn't mean you want to copy the whole problem word for word, but there should be enough so somebody can tell what the question is. So a variable with a question mark after, and a variable that says given, uh, like that. And then you want to say what you're doing in some organized way. You know, very people have uh, rules for what the format should be, but, but it should be that somebody can follow your work. I guess the way to imagine a perfect homework assignment is imagine yourself a year ago, two years ago, or whatever it is that you didn't know this material at all, and you wanted to know how to do this homework problem, and you would like to read something that tells you how to do the homework problem, you should write down that which you wish you could have read to make it easy for you to understand it. That's a perfect homework. So that includes, for example, that if you do some logical operation, a mathematical operation, like you set some variables to zero, you have to say why you're setting it to zero. Which doesn't mean you have to write an essay about it, but you have to say initial condition or uh, cancel the other side or uh, linear mental balance, some words <coughs> that thoughts are that, that uh, make some variable uh, go to zero or get canceled out. Okay, so that's, that's what you want to strive for. As I said, we're not demanding that for your grade. Similarly, you don't want to hand in your scrap paper. It's not, uh, we don't need to see. Uh, all your scratches and thoughts, uh, you'd like to see what it looks like after you've organized your thoughts. Now, if you just want to hand in 20 pages of scratch paper to prove you spent six hours on it, uh, you can do that, but I think that's not your maximal uh, learning experience. Yes? So the number of you just got back is about 10. Let's see, were, did you, Luke, are you here? Did you put two numbers down, or how did you do the writing? So, so the homework that you just turned in, um, if it took any of you six hours to do, um, it's highly unfortunate. Um, the, so the way the homework works, if you do not take six hours to do the homework, if you finish it all, you get everything, you think you got everything right, you've done all the work, then it's graded based on quality. Um, and so the grades that you see on the papers are the grades that you that have been entered. Uh, and because nobody spent six hours on this homework. Yeah, so. nobody spent six hours, yeah, I hope. Uh, if you did, come to talk to one of the TAs, please. Uh, but yeah, so really important. These th be proud of these things when you turn them in. Uh, it's kind of, I guess, the take home message. Should be. I mean, I, I, you know, it's your education, so you're free to do what you want, but you'd like to encourage these high standards. There's, I just read a poll of uh, alumni from Cornell about what it is that they learned well and helped them on their job five years and 10 years out. This alumni in mechanical engineering and what did not. And the thing that uh, mechanical engineers felt weakest on from their Cornell education in terms of their work life was communication skills. So this is uh, one way to think about it. That's why you're laughing at that. <laughs>
Uh, so this is uh, how we can learn communication skills and stuff for my practice. Again. And I think we have enough TAs and graders in this class, which is sort of unusual, so we can help you and give you feedback. So you can take advantage of that. Okay, any, que any more questions about the homework and the grading? Any of you want to talk specifically about it in detail? Or come to office hours. Uh, we have lots of office hours. If you can't make our office hours, let, me, let us know. We can reschedule them. Uh, we'd like to be available to help. There's a question over there. Yes? Somewhere in here. We'll track, we'll track them down. We have our laser scanners, our eyeball notification system. Somebody has questions. I'll answer Okay, so next thing is uh, eye clickers. Uh, they totally messed up the bureaucracy of eye clickers. And what happened is 48 of you are not registered on our system. I actually think that uh, essentially all of you did register, and that it's completely our fault, our meaning Cornell University, not me or our staff. Uh, so uh, here's a list of people. I'd like you to look at this list right now. Can I, is anybody, is the font too small for anybody? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The font is too small for some people. How about... Now, is anybody not able to read that? Okay, this is an alphabetical list of 48 people. I would like you to look for your name there. See if you can find your own name on that list. Alphabetical, shouldn't be too hard. Okay, does anybody feel like they missed a chance to see their name? Um, I, I, I don't see my name. That's just <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. See your name is means your eye clicker is registered. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, people, people say that. Let's be quiet here. Did anybody not get a chance to see their name? They would have seen it. Okay. If you saw your name there, please put A. If you did not see your name there, put E. <laughs> okay, so there should be 48 people here. Uh, so some of you are not in the class. Uh, if you're out watching the video, uh, if, uh, please check your iClicker registration and register again. So now, of these people, I only want these people to vote. Can these people get rid of their votes, please? <laughs> Just vote A or E. Take any race. <laughs> <laughs> I can record these votes. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you're here, please vote B if when you tried to register it said you're registered already. <coughs> if when you tried to register, only these people did register. Or, or, I mean, sorry, we showed up on this list. Did you, when you registered, it said you are registered already, so you were, you were happy with that. Now, what else, somebody tell me what else could have happened. Yes? Well, when I did it, I, it told me that I was already registered, and then I deleted it and re-registered it. So, that's And you were still on the list over there? Yes. Okay. So you, it said you were, already registered, you deleted and re-registered, and the thing is you did that all before some pivotal time, you were very prompt, and I think at the end of the first day of classes they flushed the i list, complaining <laughs> it was from last semester, and that was what the problem is. So I'm trying to find out how many are in that category. Okay, so any other issues with i clickers? How many of you just did not register yet one way or another? Please vote B, C. I mean, I sort of think it's none of you. You're all pretty religious about registering on Blackboard, yeah? I just went to the registration site, though. You need to go to the CIT. We have, it's all, it's the one of the CIT. It depends when you did it. I know, that's the problem. If you did it before they were ready. So they, got, they got slow. After the first day of classes, they were leaving the floor. They deleted the list and they didn't include the updates. If you did it and updated, they flushed the whole list of the first half of the first day of the Yes? 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 Yes?
and your name is still here. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, everybody who's here, just go and register again. And if, you, and if you're not in class now and you're watching the video, please go and register again. Please do that today, and I'm going to try and uh, refresh this list tomorrow, and then we'll uh, deal with all the stragglers. Unfortunately, the stragglers are going to get uh, uh, minus 20 on the final year. Okay. Uh, Next issue is, uh, I'm going to take an anonymous vote now, and this is not, uh, I'm not going to uh, <coughs> raise a question uh, about uh, me, which is that uh, I suddenly, on sometime between Monday and Tuesday, got some neurological disorder, uh, and on Tuesday afternoon I looked in the mirror and saw that my face was paralyzed on one side. And what I'm curious is, did any of you notice this in Tuesday lecture on Tuesday morning? It was, um, I didn't know about it until I looked in the mirror in the afternoon, but I looked back in the video and I could sort of see it from Tuesday morning. So the question is, did you see my face it was asymmetrical, B, or not, uh, on Tuesday? <laughs> Anybody notice that on Tuesday? I also developed a slight list, which I still have. So some of you noticed, some of you did not. Now, if you want to see it, I can make it very dramatic for you. <laughs> If I try to smile, <laughs> my eye lid doesn't close, so it's like it, it, I have to force it to blink like that. Uh, the disease is called uh, Bell's palsy. It's not uh, associated with anything bad. It's not associated with obesity or diabetes or being a male or being female. I'm a little old to get it. People between 15 and 60 get it. Um, there's a between a 70 percent and 90 percent chance that in nine months it will be better, depending on medication and so on. Uh, so there's no morals, uh, really rare disease. Uh, you go in the hospital with the symptoms that I had and they give you very good treatment because they think you had a stroke on a scale from zero to stroke, where stroke is 10, I'd say this is about a 0.1. Um, <laughs> but they treat you very well because they're worried about the uh, stroke. So anyway, I've got this weird thing in my face. I'll buy it after all semester, I'll buy it list of all semester. You can feel sorry for me if you want. I guess I feel sorry for myself. But it's, uh, in the, I'd rather this than have a broken leg or something like that. It's not so bad. OK. Uh, but anyway, this weird smile I have, it's not a sneer. <laughs> if it is a sneer, it's not. It's the same as the smile, so you have to work it out. Um, OK, so, so I want to go on with uh, uh, this 1D mechanic. Uh, what we're talking about is the uh, basic way that equals MA. And the general case we have is that the force is, is given to us if we're going to figure out what the motion is. It's some force, some function of position, uh, velocity, and time. If we're just looking at the motion afterwards and analyzing it, we can look at it and take out the velocity or time because we're only looking at one motion. If we're thinking of this as a differential equation that we're trying to solve, it has to be specified one way or another. And, and, the, and how we find the solution depends on uh, what function of force uh, of position velocity we're trying to have. The special case I was talking about last time uh, was that force was a function of position. And that led us to the idea of a potential energy, which is minus the integral from 0 to x. Now it's half of x. Uh, <coughs> to this uh, great law, which is that the total potential energy, the total energy, which is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy is a constant. And that lets you uh, solve uh, differential equations to some extent, because then this tells us then that one half uh, mv squared is equal to this e potential, which is a function of x. This is a function which you know that somebody's given you this this uh, this um, uh, force as a function of x, and then this tells you then what uh, the velocity is as a function of x. So it gives you a partial integration or partial solution of the differential equation. It doesn't tell you position is a function of time. It doesn't tell you velocity is a function of time, but it tells you velocity is a function of position. 
Now, given velocity as a function of position, you can integrate uh, and figure out what is uh, the time as a function of position. And therefore, you figured out the position as a function of time. So this is what's called the first integral of the motion. It means to solve the difference, to find the motion, you only have to integrate uh, one more time and to get this. The, uh, in a sense, you know, if you find velocity, then you find position. You have to integrate once to get velocity, one more time to get position. This first part of the integral is done, but in this indirect way, it gives you velocity as a function uh, of position. Okay, now, here's an interesting thing about these problems, which is that if you have x, double dot is a function of x, and we have a solution, <coughs> which is some solution x of t. And let's just say, let's just to make this explicit, let's say this is some function of time, g of t. So we found a motion which satisfies this differential equation, which we'll call g of t. Let's look at another function of time. I'll call it h of t, which we're going to define to be t is minus t. Now, what does h of t mean? Well, if we have a solution, and the solution looked like uh, this as a function of time, then what would the function h of t look like? Well, what we do is we look at every time what is t, we look at what is minus t. So over here is a minus t. We look at that, that corresponds to t. And we get back this function, which goes like this. It's, it's the time reversed um, uh, <coughs> so it's a new function of time. How would you see that function of time? Well, if you made a movie of the motion, and you put that movie in the old days, you take the film and you put it in the projector backwards, and you run it frame by frame backwards. Here, we had frame, 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 frame. Now we play frame, 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 frame. And as you look at it, you see it, this function of time. So this is a movie backwards. So it's a movie of the motion played backwards. <laughs> Now here's the interesting thing about that movie. Is that what we know about this differential equation, uh, sorry, about this function of time, is that it gives us back, uh, uh, it solves this differential equation. So we know that g prime prime where g double dot is equal to this f of x. So that's the taking this as a function of time. Uh, it gives us, uh, and if you like, we can put f of g now here. So at any given time, we evaluate uh, g double dot. At that time, we also evaluate x, and we get this result. Now what happens if we look at h? Uh, double dot of t, <coughs> that's equal to d by dt of d by dt of uh, g of minus t. So that's equal to d by dt of the derivative of this function of minus t. Now, this is just a chain rule problem from freshman calculus. It's a function of a function. The inside function is just multiplied by minus 1, so that turns into minus uh, g dot of t. So that's by the chain rule in calculus. And then if we do this one more time, we get minus minus g dot of t. Uh, g dot of um, minus t. And if we do this one more time, we get back uh, g uh, of t, g double dot of t, but that's equal to f of g of t. 
f of g of minus c. Uh, which means that this is equal to f of h of t. So what this says is that if we have a solution going forwards in time, we also have a solution going backwards in time. Now, this is if force is given as a function of position. If we look at any dynamical system moving any which way, even with force as a function of velocity, force as a function of time, at any, given, at any given time, there is some force. That means that once we already know the position, and we already know the solution of the differential equation, we already know the dynamics, that if we apply exactly that same force at exactly that same position, we can get exactly the same motion forwards in time and backwards in time. So let me show you kind of an extreme example of that, which is a, a horse video. <coughs> so this is an amazing horse which was trained to gallop backwards. Seriously? No. Okay. Seriously? <laughs> That's the, answer is, the answer is no, I'm lying to you. Uh, actually I am lying to you, I usually don't do that, but this is a, this is a, this is a horse galloping forwards which is a plausible dynamical motion. And then the claim is, is that if you apply all the same forces at all the same positions, or all the same times going backwards in time, you get a plausible motion. Now, the, 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 the clouds of dust don't look all that plausible, but even for the clouds of dust, it works out. Uh, what forces are those? Most of the forces here are muscle forces, so if the horse uses exactly the same muscles at exactly the same positions, it can run backwards just as well as forwards. There's some forces which are not muscular forces, and those uh, to get those to reverse, it's a little more tricky. For example, right when the paw hits the ground, there's a paw hitting the ground, there's a little collision force of that front paw. And for this to be a plausible motion backwards, we have to put a little piece of gunpowder there uh, to make a collision force when it runs backwards. But that force is not a very big part of the, of the, of the dynamics of motion. So you actually get a quite plausible motion <coughs> running forwards and backwards. And if you analyze the gates of most animals, there, there are plausible gates going forwards and backwards. Now this is also true for simple uh, kinds of systems like the harmonic oscillator, which we'll get to, I hope, later in this lecture. The harmonic oscillator looks the same uh, forwards and backwards. This is more of uh, the explicit case. <coughs> Uh, there's another example I wanted to show, which actually came up in discussion. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you exactly how it goes because I'm not good enough at YouTube. Um, but I can show you half the story, and then if you're good at YouTube, well, you can uh, you can you can help me with the other half. So here's a a, a video that I found. Well, I didn't find it like somebody sent it to me, but I've known about this video for a while. And it's this guy doing this trick. And that was the sound track for it. Replay. Okay, that, that's cool, that trick. No. What's funny about this is a few weeks ago I was in uh, giving a lecture in Santa Barbara and somebody said I want to show you a cool video of a guy doing a trick. And they, and they found on the web somewhere else that I have not been able to find exactly the same video backwards. <laughs> and she said look at this amazing trick this guy does. And it looks like an amazing trick backwards. Uh, and it even looks sort of, I guess I can go frame by frame backwards. Uh, but how do you, you can't download YouTube. <laughs> you can if you know how. Can I do it right here now or do I have to download some video for Can I do it? Raise my hand if there's a quick way I can do it right now. How? Just Google a YouTube video downloader and then I'll take you to it. That was yeah, that was not fast enough. But, uh, this is called Big Ball Trick. If somebody wants to send me this video back, uh, forwards or backwards once it's on my computer, I know how to play it backwards like the horse. Um, say again? 
Yeah. It's a software I have to download. I'm not going to do that. It's send an email. It's not, I don't want to throw it right now in front of you. Um, but, and I'll post on, uh, I'll post for others, I guess. Cause anyway, if you watch a video of this backwards, it looks like a possible trick backwards as well as forward. Uh, it looks a little harder backwards. And, uh, I'm pretty sure the real trick is the forward trick, not the backwards one. But it's very hard to tell. And the reason it's hard to tell is because the laws of mechanics, which you have a good intuition for, work forwards and backwards. And the key for that working forwards and backwards is that the two derivatives here, if you have some function of time, the minus sign comes out twice. But that's only a force as a function of position. So that means after you see a motion, you can play it backwards in a plausible motion if force is a function of position uh, at, each, at, each, at each time. Now, if you're told ahead of time, however, that force is a function of velocity, so the other big example is a force is a function of velocity, we have three big central simple cases of uh, force being specified ahead of time. The three simple cases are just one of these at a time. It was just a function of time. You just have calculus force is a function of time. A function of position, I've just talked about, you get the same because force is a function of velocity. That's the kind of thing you see uh, in the cases of uh, viscous drag. For example, our force is equal to CV is viscous drag. And then we have a quadratic drag, which uh, the best way to write quadratic drag is C is V times the absolute value of V rather than V squared. Why don't we want to put V squared in quadratic drag? <coughs> <coughs> right, if you put v squared, even though we have a minus sign here, and we, and we, we picked our sign convention to be that way, and we say there's a drag on this proportional of v squared, and we write minus c v squared, we'll get a force in that direction. But if it happens to be moving this way, and I put <coughs> the force is minus v squared, well, the velocity will be negative, v, v squared will be positive, it will give me a force in this direction. So if you write a, a computer program, say, and you put uh, minus v squared for your quadratic drag, and the thing is moving the wrong way, you will get uh, that it accelerates instead of being slowed down. So that's why you need to use this the direction in here. This is called quadratic drag. And this is the more uh, realistic drag for most of what we deal with in engineering scale. So when things move very slowly, they're slowed by viscosity. The fact that things are honey-like and goo-like. When things move fast in fluids, they're slowed down by the fact that the fluid is expelled out of the way. And it's, and it's like you're hitting particles. <coughs> and if, you're, if you're colliding with particles, the faster you're going, the faster they bounce. And, and then if you're going faster, you're hitting more particles per unit time. And the product of those two gives you this, this uh, quadratic drag. It's more subtle than that in real fluid mechanics, but that's basically uh, why you get more uh, a quadratic drag. Is it? Momentum proportions will be, the momentum flux proportion will be, and a the amount of material proportion will be. So this is what slows airplanes, cars, bicycles, baseballs, and uh, the gross homework problem you have, which is uh, bullets penetrating flesh, or bullets going through air, something like that. Now, I think we need to time this. Uh, it's unfortunate timing with news that the homework thing was uh, uh, some of the person getting shot, but it's a real world example, so I guess those are not as kind of interesting to do the calculation. Okay, so you've got force as a function of velocity. In this case, we might get some solution that looks like this, x is a function of time. Uh, the, 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 uh, sorry, x is a function of time might go like this and reach some asymptote, or it might not reach an asymptote. That's actually the subject of your homework problem is to think about whether it reaches an asymptote or not. The velocity certainly will tend towards zero for either of these drag laws. If you look at this position as a function of time, now if you play this backwards, that's also a solution of the equations. But it's a solution of the equations with the force that's associated with it going backwards in, in, as a function of time. And that force is not the one you would get from viscous drag. So if you apply a sucking force, you can get this bullet to come out through the flesh by exactly the same motion. But the laws of mechanics in terms of the drag law are not consistent with that. And that's the difference between the viscous law 
and the position dependent law, the position dependent law, the same force, you don't have to re reverse the force, the same force works for the motion going forwards and backwards. Okay, any questions about that? So it's a subtle uh, thing, and it's, but it's an interesting thing to think about. If you can uh, get this, this uh, video, it's called a uh, big ball trek. And you can look at that forwards and backwards. Tell me how I can watch the forwards and backwards. I'll show you next class if you show me something like this. Okay, any questions about that? Yes? There's a question about the one that might be squared to go that and decide how you know what you said. Yes, but I can. You want to mind this on here? No, I was just wondering how did you get that? I'm going to be doing such a special attack and use zero. Uh, this thing is equal to the uh, plus constant. Thank you for the question. So I, I did have neurological disorder. Some disease hit me suddenly between uh, Monday night and Tuesday morning. Uh, it did not cause it was not a stroke, but that does not mean I do not have previous mental disabilities which remain to this day and uh, cause me to make mistakes this type, so you should uh, <laughs> Okay, so now I want to go on to the, 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 the most uh, famous example, probably the most uh, important part of this class. You can't make a whole, actually you probably could make a whole class out of it if we wanted to, uh, but this is, uh, the model that just shows up again and again, uh, and it's something you should know kind of inside and out, this way and that. So what the basic idea is, is that uh, everything you deal with in the world has mass. Yes? Uh, if you want to look at the video, I just want to see You just email me. It's like the joke I tell in the airport when I see two people sitting next to each other texting. I say, you can just talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Andre? Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Forwards. Okay, now. Here it is. Backwards. <laughs> properly, I would have started by just showing it backwards like I did the horse. Right? <laughs> now, can you know that he didn't do that? How do you know he didn't do that? His friend rolled the ball to him. His friend is off the night. Rolls the ball to him. <laughs> Okay, so one thing is, is uh, uh, Luke says humans can't jump that high, and that's true. So we have we have a jumping, we have a pretty big jumping. So not, my claim is that whatever forces he applied when he was landing, if he applied exactly the same forces as a function of position, he could jump like that. Now, what's the deal here is that if we want to say humans can't jump that high, which might be a good explanation, is that as a property of muscles is that they don't supply forces of function of position. They have a complicated constitutive law, a complicated a relationship between force loss and position. And you can apply bigger forces when your muscles are absorbing work or resisting motion than you can apply when they're supplying work and doing motion. Which is why, for example, arm wrestling contests tend to be kind of fair. If, 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 the, the, if the force of supply was the same, when you were going forwards and backwards, and anybody who was just slightly stronger than another person would just win the arm wrestling con uh, contest. But when you're resisting motion, you can apply larger forces than when you're supplying uh, motion, when the force is with the motion. So when you're landing, you can have bigger muscular forces than when you're jumping. So 
So you can jump down from a three foot wall, but you can't jump up onto a three foot wall. <laughs> so I think uh, Luke is right about this one that that's an implausibly high jump. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy, you know, I mean, his skins are on board, but that's actually Michael Jordan. And um, <laughs> you can't jump that high. <laughs> 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 well, that part I disagree with. The ball is so light. The ball is so light. The ball, the ball, is so light. <laughs> Well, no, just watch what you're saying. The laws of mechanics work the same forwards and backwards. So what is it that you don't like about the laws? It's not Every force, every force works out the same forwards and backwards. That's what I just tried to tell you. That's what the laws of mechanics says. So if there's anything not plausible here, it has to be that the forces are not plausible. Not, it's not about momentum balance or the laws of mechanics. And I, I think I'd go farther than that. I'm going to guess that, that uh, somebody could do this. Okay, so, any, um, so I think it, just what I want to say is any quick comments you have about the momentum doesn't work, the anger message doesn't work, those comments are wrong. Any, any reason it's not going to work is because some force is not plausible because it's different forwards and backwards, or some coordination skill of human beings isn't good enough for this, which I think is probably not right. People can do the most amazing things. Okay, thanks for that video. Any other questions or comments? Do you do a battery check to see if it's at least on? Is it blue? It is not blue. Power on. Is, is, uh, is less than the density of air. And uh, this other property is everything has sort of uh, forces when they're deformed. And solid objects, the forces that they have when they deform tend to be proportional to the amount they deform. And that's what uh, TAM 2020 was about. The second half of it is that everything is somehow a spring that when you deform it, it there's a force that pushes back proportional to how much it, it, it moves. And that's true for uh, all kinds of things. It's true for flesh. Uh, it's true for this table. You don't see it going down, but it's probably going down something like a millimeter when I push on it, and the harder I push, the farther it goes down. And so anything, if you deform it a little bit, it wants to go back. In 2020, the way we worried about that is we looked at how hard you have to push on something to make it deform. And we looked at the stretches of rods and the twists of bars and the bending of beams. Now in this class, we'll look at how things uh, move uh, on their own, even maybe if you don't push on them. So uh, taking this uh, table, I can push on it, but then I can let go. Let's say I push on it hard and I let go. When I let go, it was in a position where it wanted to push on my hand and my hand isn't there anymore. So I cannot satisfy the static equilibrium equations, but I can satisfy the dynamics equations. So what happens is this mass has a force on it from the fact that it's all springy and it wants to pop up and then it pops up too far and what happens now if I push down and let up suddenly, I can't let up suddenly, so here's the way I can push down and let up suddenly is I hit it. After I'm done hitting it, you hear the sound, boom. What was that boom sound is it popped up and down and went woo 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 and it faded out and you heard boom, there's a little bit of pitch to it. Uh, which is that it's an oscillatory motion. And all things all over the place oscillate when you bang on them. Um, that's a pretty good one. So we displace a little bit. We could calculate if we use beam theory somehow and do something about the properties of this, what, the, what kind of spring this was. It's deflected, I let go, and then it oscillates. And you see oscillations all over the place in all kinds of machines, equipment, not equipment, 
in the, vi the vibrations of a violin screen, uh, uh, string, the uh, pressure of uh, air when it vibrates. In fact, the fact that you hear me at all right now is that the air is compressing and decompressing, and it's an inertial interaction between elasticity and, and uh, mass, which makes it possible for the sound to transmit, for my vocal cords to vibrate, and so on. So what you'd like to do is look at the simplest possible model that has that effect in it, and that we can do that with this one-dimensional mechanics. We have this mass, and then we'd like to look at a force which returns it to its position proportional to some deflection, and that's what we do with a spring like this. And here's this mass. Uh, here's the spring. And then we want to keep track of the motion. Now, what we do the first time we do this problem is we kind of cheat in how we keep track of the motion, which is even though this spring has some spring constant k and it has some rest length l, and we could measure position, say, relative to some rest point over here, what we do is we measure position relative to some special place, and that special place is the, uh, wh the position, and let's pick some point we're going to keep track of. Let's say we'll keep track of this point here, A. It's the position of A when uh, the spring is relaxed. And this is a cheat which gives us the simple uh, differential equation uh, straight off the bat. Uh, you have a homework problem where, things, where, you're, where you're supposed to not use that cheat and you're supposed to keep track of the motion relative to some simple reference point over here. And to make it even harder, we have this hanging and we have a gravity force. If you take, uh, let me just give you a hint about how this homework goes. If we take a mass and hang it on a spring, uh, what you find out is that if you do this in sequence, like first you look at the spring before you put a mass on it, then you take it and you put a spring and you put the mass on it, but it's not vibrating yet. It hangs down to some position here. And then you look at it when it's oscillating. Say it's oscillating between uh, these two positions here, this one and this one. What you find out is that the oscillations are relative to this point here. So this, you'd measure x relative to the equilibrium of the mass in the presence of gravity. You wouldn't measure it relative to here, you wouldn't measure it relative to here, and you wouldn't measure it, and you would measure it relative to um, here. So what you use as a reference point is a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, the way people deal with these things is, is you find out the static equilibrium configuration of your system. In this case, it's not up here. It's not where the spring is when it's relaxed. It's where the system is relaxed in equilibrium with gravity, where mg is equal to uh, uh, k times the stretch of the spring. And we measure the oscillations relative to that equilibrium position. In this particular case, it's easy to think of that equilibrium position as being right here. OK, so if we do that, then we get this uh, simple result that the force here is proportional to k times x. Now really, if we were in the 202 land, we'd be careful and we'd go L minus L0. And then if you're over in this land where there's some other force applied, you have to be even more careful still. And then uh, later on, uh, in next lecture, I think I won't get to it this lecture, we'll have to be even more careful still if we have many springs. The punchline is, for the purposes of understanding vibrations, if you want to keep the equations as simple as possible, you want to measure your deflections relative to the position the system is in equilibrium in when it's not moving. Okay. So now that we have uh, this force like this, then if we take our linear momentum balance equation, it turns into the equation F is equal to MA. Uh, this is something I said a lot in 2020. It's something I recommend for your homework. Whenever you write an equation down uh, and you're going to substitute in a bunch of stuff, write the general form down so people know what you're substituting in. Okay, so in this case, we're going to substitute in minus kx, and then our mass times acceleration is x double dot, and now we can rewrite this equation a, uh, a bunch of ways. So the standard form is, uh, let me write it various ways.
the math 293 form of this one is mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero. Another form people like to write is x double dot plus k over mx is equal to zero. Why? Because I just keep this leading term with a coefficient of one. Some, peop some things that people like to do is they write to the x double dot and then they know already something about the solution of the equation, so they write it like this where this omega zero represents uh, what's called the natural frequency. So omega zero, they define to be the square root, the positive square root of uh, k over m. Now in this class, which is not a whole course in vibrations, it's a course in dynamics, we have circular motion to deal with. And uh, in circular motion, we use angular velocity to be omega and to keep uh, that uh, from being confusing, I try to use a different letter so you can put here lambda zero squared times x and we just define this to be a, just use a different letter so that when we get to circular motion we're not confused about the relationship between circular motion and oscillatory motion. Now they're connected to each other but I'd like to think of them as different things. Then we could also write x double dot is equal to minus uh, k over m times x. And I guess my favorite form for these equations would be v dot is equal to minus k over m x and x dot is equal to v. And write this pair of differential equations. And why is this my favorite? Because this is the one that's all set up for numerical solution. This is the one that will work if we get to more complicated equations <laughs> where we can't use our math 293 methods to generate an analytic solution. So we say that the rate of change of the speed, we know if we know the state, and the rate of change of position is always the velocity. So the second differential equation is a kinematic equation, and the first one is a dynamic equation. So this is a dynamic equation. And this is the kinematic equation. OK, so how does this thing work? Um, well, we want to get, say, an analytic solution to this. If you try to get an analytic solution by deriving it, you will find that the derivation is just something you had to memorize anyway. And it's a tricky, hard derivation. So how do you actually solve this is you guess the solution. Now, the standard guess for constant coefficient differential equations is the form e to the lambda t. If you plug in e to the lambda t into this, you'll get that the roots are imaginary. So you get solutions of the form e to the i uh, something t. And then you say both the real parts and imaginary parts of the solution. You have to take real parts and imaginary parts and so on. So the easier thing to do is this equation is so famous that you just guess the solution, which means you, if you like, you memorize the solution. Or I don't like to think of the word memorization as being appropriate. You know the solution. You know, I think I said this in 2020 last semester. It's a bad thing about teaching the same students two semesters in a row is that I tell the same jokes every semester and uh, same moral stories and so on. And I, so uh, maybe you'll learn them better or something. But. Uh, you know, if I ask you your name, what's your name? Jacob. What? Jacob. Jacob, did you memorize that? No. Okay, so that's how it should be for the, with the uh, solution of this uh, differential equation. It's not that you memorize it, it's just that you know it. Uh, so what is the general solution of this differential equation? It's uh, x of t is equal to c1 cosine uh, this lambda t plus c2 sine of lambda t. And this lambda, if you like, you could not, you could forget that. You can plug that into the differential equation and find out what it is. Uh, but you will find out what it is. It's uh, the square root of uh, k over m. And what do I mean by this is a general solution is that, how come you say I don't have the solution to the differential equation, is that this spring and mass can move lots of different ways depending on the initial condition. Now what do I mean lots of different ways? I mean all the different ways consistent with the C1 and C2. So it could move like a sine wave oscillation. It could move like a cosine oscillation. It could move like a mixture of the sine and cosine oscillation depending on 
whether, for example, it started with an initial velocity, started with initial position, or started who knows how. All of those are the form C1 cosine plus C2 sine lambda t. Okay, are there any extra homework files somewhere? What? Can you try and consolidate those homeworks and then uh, uh, see you next time? <laughs>